Jesus told the Jews, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. In the book of Luke, chapter 24 and verse 44, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, fulfilling the prophet Isaiah, chapter 2 and verse 2, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it, and many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rome. Thank you, Jesus. Greetings again in the sweet name of Jesus. I want to welcome you back to our program here again today. And the subject we're speaking on is concerning the prophecy that Joel began to prophesy that would happen in the future and truly it's already happened. And I'm letting you know by God's good word that on the day of Pentecost, we've seen that being fulfilled and God is still today pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh and, and He's never shut that door yet. But now when Jesus comes to receive the church, then He will cut off the Holy Ghost and everything else, and then that'll be your final end. But now a lot is teaching that He's yet to come to open the fountain to David and begin to pour His Spirit out upon all flesh. But I want to show you by the Bible that that's done, begin, and still good for us today if people will lay aside their weights and things that hinder them and really seek the face of God He'll pour it out today just as good as he did in the early church. And today I want you to turn with me now as I finish in this. In the book of Acts chapter 2, and I want to start about verse 14. You listen now how Joel's prophecy of, Acts, or of Joel chapter 2 and about verse 28 has been fulfilled and still good today. The Bible said, But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, now concerning the Holy Ghost, You men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this knowing unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose. Now they were drunk on that wine, but not like the, the people were getting in their mind. They were thinking that they were naturally drunk. So God was a really blessing on that day. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that. Now did Peter say this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel and it shall come to pass in the last days. You see, the world's looking for this yet to be, but folks, you better be heeding to it now and get out of reforms and, and quit trying to uh, do what people do and try to really seek the face of God and you can feel the same blessings that God poured out upon Zion at the day of Pentecost. And the Bible said it shall come to pass in the last days, and Peter said this is fulfilling it, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Now when he's talking about all flesh, he's talking about the flesh that belonged to God. You see, in Malachi chapter 2, the Bible said, The Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. So Jesus is the builder of his church, and the Holy Ghost came back on the day of Pentecost, and he was to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Now that's talking about the flesh that belonged to God. That's not talking about a world that won't repent or won't turn to him. People's teaching that everybody in the whole world is going to, going to receive that spirit whether they repent or not. And that's not true. 
folks he's talking about to a repentant people that was the flesh that he would pour it upon. Remember Jesus said when the spirit of truth is come, he'll reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Now he has to convict you and then when he convicts you and you come unto him, then he can pour his spirit out and right there you're helping fulfill joy. All right, the Bible said, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. So you see there was more than just speaking in tongues. They did speak with other tongues that day, but God began to prophesy through them. Some of them got drunk on that wine. So God has a lot of works that goes with receiving the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said, And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire, vapor, smoke, the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Now, isn't that exactly what Joel said in Joel chapter 2? And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Now, Lord is not that name, but the Lord has a name, and that's the name of Jesus. And the Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved or delivered and back there in Joel, for he said, In Mount Zion shall be deliverance. See, before Mount Zion could have the deliverance, the Lamb had to lay down in Zion and die as a foundation, thank God, and fulfill Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 16. And that was God himself. Did not the Bible say, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, in Isaiah chapter 20, uh, 28 and verse 16, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion. Come on, people. Zion is representing the church. I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, and that's Jesus. I know the world's a pushing that Messiah is yet to come, but folks, you better read your Bible. Messiah has already come to Mount Zion, and he fulfilled uh, Romans 10, where it said in chapter 11, where it said the deliverer will come into Zion and, and, and all Israel will be saved, which just simply meant if they'll come to Jesus, they can be saved by his blood. And I'm going to show you that the world's a teaching contrary to Peter and pushing this way out in the future, folks. But we'd better read our Bible because I'm going to show you that whoever called on the name of the Lord, and the name is not Lord, it's not Father, it's not Son, it's not Yahweh, it's not Jehovah, it's Jesus Christ. He is the name of the everlasting God of Israel. See, the first and greatest commandment was to hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. So the Lord was the true God and He was one Lord. And we're to love Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. So as far as the one God, honey, that is all there ever has been. God has never been divided into three distinct Godheads as your theologians are teaching today. Honey, this doctrine that's dividing Him is not of Jesus Christ. It's of the devil. But truly, there's only one Savior, and it took that Savior to come to the earth and veil his body in flesh and blood and die for the sins of the world. And then through his death now, he was to bring deliverance that the law could not fulfill because it was weak in the flesh, and God was to turn down all the works of the law of Christ is the end of the law. See, for righteousness to every man that believes. We're not under the law, neither are we under the offerings and sacrifices, and don't matter who it is, whether it's Jew, Gentile, no matter what nation it is, Jesus will never accept them law sacrifices anymore. God said offerings and sacrifices, I've had no pleasure. So I want to plead to the Jews today and also to the Gentiles, go to Jesus. He's done tore down the difference between the Jew and Gentile, made everybody that will come to him of one fold by calling upon the name of the Lord. Now, you know as well as I do the sacred name of God is Jesus. There's no other name given. And Jesus said, in John 5, 43, I come in my Father's name. Now the world's trying to divide God 
And they're even saying it's Antichrist to believe in one God. But honey, I'm going to tell you, I agree with the first commandment. And if you can't keep it, you can't keep the rest. There's only one God and none other but He. But now that God had to become the Son of God. And that's one of the greatest understandings we need today is for how was Jesus born into this world. But now did Joel prophesy uh, uh, years before Pentecost that God would pour out His Spirit? Did Peter stand up here in Acts chapter 2 verse 16? Did he admit that what they were seeing there on the day of Pentecost was Joel's prophecy being fulfilled? Now folks, he's not going to do this twice. Only way you're going to get any Holy Ghost is get in the name of Jesus. And the Bible said, But this is that, verse 16, which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, and it had come to pass in the last day, saith God, that I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. You see? And then the Bible said, Listen now. And it shall come to pass, in verse 21, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be uh, saved. You men of Israel, now Peter's talking first to the lost sheep of Israel. Now a lot of people say that Acts 2 and verse 38, repentance in the name of Jesus Christ was only to the Jew. Come on people. The Bible said the promise is to you and to your children, that was the Jews, and to all that are afar off, that's your Gentile. The wall's done been torn down, folks. There's no difference today to God whether you're a Jew, Gentile, in every nation, then that will fear him, he'll accept them. But you've got to go through his word. And listen what he said. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as yourselves also know. You see, you're not going to get the Jews to believe this heathen bunch of that claims that they know the Lord and, and they don't have no signs or miracles or gifts or don't even believe in it because the Jews believe distinctly that a prophet of God always was confirmed by miracles and signs. God would always work with them in miracles and signs. And that's truth. And a real man of God today, God somewhere in his life, if he's a minister to bring the gospel, God will do these miracles and signs. But now, you'll not convince the Jews with all this theology and all this philosophy of men. Honey, God ain't even interested in that. But a real man of God, God always worked with them with signs and wonders. Even in the apostles' day, did not the Bible say they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs and miracles. Now, that don't mean you have to see a sign or miracle to be saved. No, it don't. Because Jesus told a lot of them that except you see that, you're not going to believe. And then when he did perform miracles, he still didn't believe. Remember, John chapter 12, the Bible said, but though he'd done so many miracles before him, he before them, yet they believed not on him, and a lot of them would not confess him because they're afraid of getting put out of the synagogue. But you listen to me. If we don't love the Lord enough to be willing to put out once in a while for Jesus, then you need help yourself. And I'm going to truly say God did work miracles and signs through the apostles and the prophets. And the Bible said here that Peter said, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders. I mean, this man raised the dead, you hear me? Opened the blinded eyes, took the tongue of the dumb, and made them to speak. Do you know why he did all these works? Because he said, if you don't believe me, then believe me for the works sakes. Now, what was the works for? Go back to Isaiah, the prophet of God in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 35 and verse about 3. The Bible said, Strengthen ye the weak hands, confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that have a fearful heart, that's God's children, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. The Bible said He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind would be opened, the deaf would hear, the lame would leap as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb would sing. And the Bible said in Isaiah uh, chapter 35, for in the wilderness, and that's the house of Israel, shall waters break out, and that's the Holy Ghost, and streams into the desert, which means God was going right on and turning that middle wall of difference down and going right on to the Gentiles and bringing everybody under one fold. And that's the reason Jesus done all these miracles and signs 
was to fulfill that was written in the prophets concerning him, folks. So you see, Messiah means more than just a prophet. You hear what I'm saying? Messiah means deliverer. And also, ladies and gentlemen, read your Bible. Messiah means God Almighty with us. Did not the little uh, prophet Isaiah, one of the greatest prophets of the Messiah there was, in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Now read this in your Bible, your Old Testament. Did the Bible say that Isaiah 9 and verse 6, that unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and that's Messiah. And the government would be upon his shoulder, and the Bible said in his name, the name of this great son. See, it was God that become a son, not two distinct persons like the world's a teaching. You don't even need to believe that garbage. But the Bible said a child would be born, a son would be given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name, that's Jesus, shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. You see what Jesus Messiah is? Now you read Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. The same prophet God spoke to him and said, The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin, that was Mary, shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And the New Testament in Matthew uh, chapter 1, verse 18 on down, speaking of the birth of Jesus, interprets Emmanuel, meaning God, come on, read it, God with us. So you see, Messiah was more than just a prophet. He was God Almighty Himself, and that's what Christ means because God made Him Lord and Christ. Jesus is Lord and Christ means Messiah or Lord and God. You see, it's more than the world's a teaching. But look what He said here. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel, they brought Jesus before the priests and the council, and foreknowledge of God, you have taken Him by wicked hands, have crucified and slain, notice this, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death from him, because it was not possible that he should be holden to it. The Bible said God raised him up, having loosed the pains of death, that he should not be holden to it. Read on. For David speaketh concerning him. Concerning who? The Messiah, Jesus. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he's on my right hand that I should not be moved. And David said, Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad, speaking of Christ. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, which is simply saying the body of Jesus was not left in the tomb. All right? Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. It was impossible for that body, brother, that they laid in that tomb, Jesus' body, to decay. A lot of them said that he's not a body no more, he's just spirit, honey. That is wrong. Jesus Christ's body is as much alive today as it was 2,000 years ago. And folks, that body could not decay because it was God's body. That was the Word that was made flesh. And the Bible said that because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. And then Peter said, Men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Now read verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet, David was a prophet. Being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with a oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, and that's representing Christ, according to the flesh, you see, he would raise up Christ to sit upon his throne. Christ is on the throne of David. God said, I'll not fail you to leave a man upon the throne of David. But this time, Jesus is the great high priest. And brother, there is never again going to be another priest 
because Jesus is the only high priest upon the throne of David and these leaders today are preaching to you that David is going to sit again on that throne. Honey, they ain't a bit of that true. Jesus is up on the throne of David. And did the Bible say in, in Revelation 12 that the child was caught up under God and to his throne and he's a ruling on that today and I know a lot don't understand it but in Isaiah 9 and 6 the Bible said the government would be upon his shoulder and said that of the increase of his government there would be no end upon the throne of David and brother Jesus is the one that delivered the children of Israel the ones that received him now the remnant that he's the one that delivered them from that bondage and fear of death and folks if God hadn't have left the remnant then the whole nation and everybody else would have been like Sodom and Gomorrah. But thank God he did leave us a remnant. And Jesus has done fulfilled this. They're preaching all this yet to be folks. But if you really want the Holy Ghost, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about it. Listen now. First of all, the Bible said he's seen this before. David's seen it. Spoke of the resurrection of Christ. So he's done raised that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. God would not allow that body of Jesus to be destroyed and decay because number one, now listen to me, it was not made of the dust of the ground as Adam was. Jesus' body was not uh, dust of the ground even though it was flesh and blood. You hear me? The Bible said in the book of John verse about 10 and 11 on down through there said that he was in the world. The world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him Jesus gave them power to become the sons of God. Now listen. Even to them that believe on his name Jesus' name which were born. Now he was born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So he had no part of human blood as far as blood of Mary, blood of Joseph, or the lineage of David and so forth. He purchased the church with God, his own blood. That's exactly what the Bible said in Revelation 1 and in Acts chapter 20. Uh, Paul said to take heed to yourselves and all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost made you overseers to feed the church of God which he, God, purchased with his own blood. So you see, Jesus' blood was not blood of Mary. It was not the flesh of Joseph. It was not the flesh of Mary. You hear what I'm saying? Because Mary asked the angel in Luke chapter 1, when he told her about the baby, she said, how shall these things be? Remember, she's a virgin. Seeing I know not a man. And the God said, the Holy Ghost through Gabriel will come upon you. The Ho Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow thee. And that holy thing born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So you see, the only Bible Father Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Not Joseph, not Mary's blood, nor any other human blood. The Bible said he was born not of blood nor of the will of flesh. He had his own blood and flesh, but it wasn't man. See, of, I'm talking about man of the dust of the ground like Adam and Joseph and so forth. But because Jesus said, you're from beneath, remember? I am from above. You're of this world. I am not of this world. So these scriptures, the world's all looking for the future, folks. You better search it out. Listen to what he said. This Jesus as God raised up whereof we are witnesses, and Peter said, Therefore, being by the right hand of God and exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, that's talking about the Holy Ghost, which you now see and hear. They didn't only hear that wind, but they seen the appearance of it sit upon them like cloven forest tongues, rather. And the Bible said, For David is not ascended into the heavens, so he ain't there yet, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, see, did you know the same Holy Ghost that was speaking out of David and seeing the suffering of Christ was the same Lord, that spirit that was in David was the same Lord that was born in Bethlehem of Judea and that same spirit in David is what said the Lord said unto my Lord. You see, the Holy Ghost was speaking out of David and calling Christ the Lord. That's why it said the Lord said unto my Lord. It didn't talk about two Lords or three or four. The Bible said, uh, 
David's not ascended into the heavens, but said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, now Peter's wanting you to know this, that God has made that same Jesus, and there will never be another Messiah. You hear me? Jesus is your all Messiah. Only one you'll ever get. You'll never get another one. You either accept him, Jew and Gentile, or you'll die lost. It's that simple. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, Peter said, that God has made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, Lord both, Lord and Christ, which means Father and Son. And the Bible said, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. It struck them to the heart. And said unto Peter, listen to this, and to the rest of the apostles, Matthew and all of them, men and brethren, what shall we do? There's a question. What do we do to receive what Joel prophesied, the Holy Ghost? Then Peter said unto them, here it is, and I'll guarantee you, as God is my witness, you that are listening in, if you're lost, and you really want to be saved if you'll obey these scriptures. And I mean out of your heart, not just because I'm telling you, but obey it in your heart and repent. God will give you what he gave to, to the people at Pentecost. And Joel's prophecy can be fulfilled in you. Then Peter said unto them, repent. That's the first step. Jesus even preached repentance. And be baptized every one of you. He didn't leave nobody out, Jew and Gentile. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See? For the promise is unto you, to your children and to all. Now let's see. A lot of people said that was just to the Jew. Is it? Listen to him again. The promise is unto you, your children, and to all that are afar off. That's the Gentiles. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now hear me, church, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word, they gladly received it. They didn't get puffed up, run to their preacher and say, Preacher, he's preaching different than you are. Honey, the Bible said they that gladly received Peter's word were baptized. And the Bible said, And the same day there was added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers, and God added. Now, folks, truly there's a right repentant way for you today. Read these things out. Joel's done fulfilled it, and Peter's are still carrying it on because he's got the keys of the kingdom. And I'll speak to you. Now, stay with me in this message because I'm going to show you that fountain is open to all of us. So now I see you again. God bless you as a prayer in Jesus' name. We'd like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in this outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to Church of Jesus Christ, P.O. Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky, 40806. May God bless you.